Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. This is my largest watercolor to date, Ponte Vecchio. This is size 240 by 70 centimeters. Um, and I do want to share with you a bit of kind of heart to heart, my thoughts on the process, my thoughts on the painting. But before that, I wanna show you some of the process. So first, let's rewind. Hey, Lee Ron here. So let me show you something fun. So you may be wondering, what is this? <laughs> What's happening here? Uh, so I'm actually unbuckling uh, a large, large sheet of paper. Uh, let me explain. So in my plans, I have a huge painting to make, <laughs> like a really big one. Um, it, this is gonna be around 240 by 70, I think. So it's gonna be very landscape oriented. Uh, it's something I have shown you before, a scene I have shown you before, so I can tease it out. But what I did was I took out the, this is Arsh watercolor paper. I took it out of the pack and I rolled it the other way. So the way it was rolled so far for years now, I rolled it the other way. Hopefully that'll undo the curve, the natural curve. Uh, and then uh, I can work on it relatively flat. We'll see how it goes. Hey, so I'm gonna try and unroll this thing. Now I am testing out a new mic, so that's fun. Uh, let me show you though. This will probably be a bit of a disaster, I'm not gonna lie, but let's open it up. And you know what? It has lost some of its curve. So I can actually work with it without it closing completely. Um, it will be a challenge, it's gonna be an interesting painting for sure. Now I'll probably work on this side, but just to give you some idea again of how large the painting is gonna be. <laughs> so we're talking about something like that. So I'm actually fairly excited to get this one started. I will keep you updated. I'll film snippets of the process just to give you an idea what it's like. So let me show you my uh, first failed plan. So my uh, Sony camera actually has a projector and I thought I could perhaps project uh, the, the image that I'm gonna paint that you see now. But the problem is um, I can't get the camera farther enough from the paper to actually fill it all up. So what I'll probably need to do is find a spot in our home where I can get that distance. I don't think there is such a spot because you really need to go very far off for it to fill in the entire page. I may have to just draw this from observation, whatever. Well, look at that through the corridor, I was able to fill the entire thing. And now all I have to do is sketch and move, sketch and move, sketch and move. So what I did was uh, I measured exactly where this point falls on the paper in Photoshop, and it's about 87 centimeters. So I measured from that end, 87 centimeters, and I placed it right there. I moved the painting to place it right there. And based on that, now I have the orientation of the entire scene. So I know at least what I'm seeing right now on the screen, I can sketch fully and then move it and work with the projector to see how, how it'll measure. But I can at least sketch the main central section in this huge size and start orienting myself. Even if I'll have to add the rest uh, from observation, I'll still have a much, much easier time. So this is where I'm at right now. Uh, pretty detailed, I would say. Um, one of the challenging parts here is the fact that this moves a bit, so we have to be a little careful, and the fact that I'll have to work in parts. Uh, this is about halfway, I would say, half of the painting. It's just not the middle of it, but it is halfway. Uh, and I have my iPad here to kind of cross-reference, uh, just to make sure for the smaller details that are a little harder uh, to figure out. I have it zoomed in on whatever I want. Um, and make sure I'm as accurate as I can. I prefer to get most of the details at this stage and later on just add the bare minimum of what's necessary, like the real small in between. Uh, all the windows, everything else, it's best if I can get it done now. And I have noticed a lot of nuances that I never noticed in the tiny version of this scene that I have painted already on a tutorial here. Um, a lot of the nuances of where the bridge connects here to the water. It's things you can't really see when it's such a small format. It's best even if you don't see them sometimes um, and just work the general thing. But here you have to get into the nitty gritty because it's huge, it's a huge painting. Uh, you wanna be able to show most of it. Uh, and, and yeah, some people asked about um, choosing the reference photo for uh, large paintings. And I would say one thing, you can paint everything uh, in any size you choose. 
but one thing about large paintings is you do end up with a lot of empty spaces if you don't have enough details in your, in your photo to begin with. Uh, you sometimes won't know what to draw there uh, if you haven't from the beginning uh, decided on a photo that actually has a lot of details in it. Uh, I think it's a little easier when you do have those details to work with. So we're introducing a pretty big milestone and that is beginning to paint this. Uh, as you can see here, this is why I say don't worry about having everything flow together, forget about it. Uh, this is a large wash, so yes, I did it yesterday, I placed it, um, the painting completely to the side so that it flows down, but now that we get to the details, this is all paper white, I don't care if I have to work this section, that section, this section, all separate, that is perfectly fine. If you try and paint everything in one go, you'll really lose your way, so I actually have this here rolled up on my desk, and I'm working section by section, that is perfectly fine and I hope to share a bit of that process with you. So just real quick regarding this process, I've actually already shown it in another video talking about painting large and not worrying about painting everything together, as I just mentioned. You can paint however you want, whatever works for you, it is very much a living, breathing kind of desire that you have to just be aware of. Sometimes you'll feel like painting section by section like I'm doing here. Sometimes you'll feel like going wild and merging a lot of stuff together. That is fine. However way you go is fine. In this particular example, I am working section by section and I have zero concerns about this. As long as the section I'm working on looks good and I give it its fullest attention, I'm good. Now, if you want to check out this process again, be sure to check out that other video I mentioned. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what I'm dealing with when painting like this, I have this weird improvisation because a lot of this scene goes uh, very horizontal and to make use of gravity, it's the most efficient to just rotate the entire thing, hang it up like that and just let the things flow as much as possible. And even then, uh, it's very challenging to get the right flow and I'm going to give you, because I really need to focus while doing this actually, but I do want to give you just a view into this process. Um, so I'm actually working my way around these bridges right now. Uh, I'm going to need way more <laughs> doing this, you know, one handed. Um, I'm going to need way more uh, water here. And I'm just establishing some kind of an initial wash. Uh, it doesn't really matter as much, like my colors don't have to be accurate. Uh, what's more important right now is that I block in some of the shapes so that it's easier to uh, orient myself around the painting later on. So I want to really see where the bridges are, like I blocked this entire main bridge, I uh, forgot its name, Ponte Vecchio, yes, that's how I, I want to call this painting. Um, and just to make sure I know where to paint, especially later on uh, when some of the darker washes come into play, I really want to make sure I know what I'm doing. Uh, so yep, that's how it is. I showed you some of the rest of the process and hopefully that was kind of entertaining and educational when I worked on the table. I didn't talk simultaneously, of course, uh, but this is a bit of a different view of how I approach these things. Of course, I'm working super slowly because I'm trying to <laughs> be focused while I do this. Not the easiest task in the world, let me tell you that. But in any case, I'm going to continue that, map out the bridges, map out the shapes, and then slowly and gradually push it to be darker and darker. Hey, sorry for the bad audio quality. Hopefully you can hear me. They're doing something outside drilling or I don't know. But just to show you how you can focus on one area at a time, finish that, then move on to another. So I'm just starting working on this bridge in small sections and that is perfectly fine. You see, like this, uh, you don't have to connect everything. So one more thing I want to show you here. Um, Sometimes when I have a really big wash, uh, one of my ways to actually know my way around it is to pre-map the highlights like this. So I do sometimes paint light to dark technically. I did the same thing here. Uh, these were all washes, again, that I painted in advance and only then I'm starting to add on top of them. Now look at how bad this section looks compared to this section. That's just because, once again, 
there is no full context. And in these types of large paintings, the time you'll spend with no full context is just longer. So it's kind of a matter of bracing and just continuing doing the thing that, that works and following the shapes you see, the colors you see and all of that. But in any case, I mapped out all of the rooftops here because these are going to be the highlights. And then once I'll add the buildings in, they're going to be much darker than these. And it's going to be uh, visible. You're, you're going to see immediately after I paint these, how these things that now look dark are going to pop out. Uh, and that's a big part of this kind of a process. Again, you have to do some modifications just to make sure uh, that you can actually paint and know where you're painting. Now you could wing it, you could just you know skip the highlights while doing a big big wash. Uh, sometimes I'll do that in this uh, instance it's just such a huge wash that I felt more comfortable doing it this way. Uh, so one of the final touches I added I want to show you is all of this area uh, with the people and cars. Uh, the cars weren't there. Uh, I just kind of put them in based on highlights and I mean they were there in the photo but they weren't there in the previous stages if you remember. Uh, so I just placed them based on some highlights I left uh, and some general shadows. Uh, a big part of making them believable is actually these cast shadows to the right uh, but also because I've painted so many cars I kind of know how to just place them in and have them make sense. The other really important part is the people. Now a lot of these are very much suggested. You cannot paint really all of these details in the shadow. I think, I think it's just not fun. Uh, if I were to try and actually render one person at a time. So hinting at them from afar will actually make a lot more sense uh, and will work much better in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I also use a similar method of just adding highlights after the fact to some select spots, but you have to remember all of these people are in the shadow fully, so there's no need for highlights on most of them, but those that are close to the edge of the shadow may have a couple of highlights because the light does catch a white t-shirt or something like that. Uh, and that's pretty much where I'm at. I think this is really near complete. I use the sa that same approach here on the bridges to add details, on these farther bridges to add some highlights. This kind of a highlight I also added in the same way. So believe it or not, this is done. I'm going to show you the end result once again in a second, but I'm just going to sign this. Now this is a huge piece, so I have to make sure at least that the signature shows a bit uh, and also that it doesn't get cropped if I end up framing it in a different way, adding passport to stuff like that. So I'm going to place it, I think, somewhere around here. And that would probably be uh, my largest signature yet. Um, these are the kinds of things you do have to relate to the overall size of the piece sometimes. Um, just to make it not even prominent, but just feel like a part of the thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to zoom out. Let me show you. This is what we've got, pardon the mess. So this is it, final result. Um, this process was uh, everything. Uh, exhausting, frustrating, fun, uh, very rewarding, um, very strange because I still look at this and I'm still unsure honestly if things work because I'm so close to the picture and I think the larger the painting is the worse this phenomenon becomes. I honestly <laughs> look at some of these parts, some of them connect, some of them don't. What usually happens is I will look at the painting perhaps a month later, I'll probably roll it for now, unroll it a month from now and, or something like that, you know, and I'll look at it and everything will connect. This is usually how it works for me. Now, I know it's good. I know it's one of my best for sure. Uh, it's just sometimes hard to see when you're so close to it, especially again, when you're so close, it's such a huge piece. Um, I do want to talk a bit about the sections. I started with this section, uh, which funny enough made me feel a little less confident about it because I was kind of finding the ropes of painting this large uh, of a size. <clears throat> but looking back at it, uh, this one in particular, this area and this that I started with, you saw it in the process, uh, I, I started from this spot, basically the entire thing, after putting in the sky and some of the water. Uh, 
this ended up being one of the nicest looking spots. I was really worried about this because there's a huge mess there. Um, but I think it ended up working quite nicely, especially with the, the suggested people and the cars. My uh, slightly opaque cobalt turquoise helped a lot here. Um, so this ended up being a section I'm quite happy with. Uh, another section I was worried about is the entire bridge. Like how will I be able to paint all of these details and, and get some kind of a flow? You know, again, you can paint in sections, but I still wanted the sections to flow on their, in their own right. So I used these areas as stop lines almost. So I worked on this quarter of the or fifth of the bridge and this quarter, this quarter. I worked them part by part um, and I did do a lot of wet and wet. Um, now, after I finished like the two first sections, I was honestly blown away. I thought to myself, this is amazing. This painting is going the right way. It made me relax a bit and feel more confident. Uh, but then again, the more sections were added and the painting was recontextualized. Again, some challenges and, and nagging thoughts came back of, is this part working together? Like, let me give you an example. All of these buildings right here. Are they dark enough to contrast with the roof of Ponte Vecchio to actually look good? You know, these are the kinds of things I've been thinking about, not being sure if they work or not. Um, all of these bridges, am I fading them correctly into the distance to make them look like they recede? All of the people and the details here, all of these rooftops. Um, the one thing I was quite confident is actually this section right here. Uh, all of these buildings that I put, uh, the details I put after the fact, uh, these work really well in my opinion. I think they look really good. And I would also say I like how this is a left a little looser. I could have darkened this, but honestly I like the way it looks and I like the way this is established, all the shadows in the water. One of the more tricky bits was the water because there's a lot of gradual transitions if you really pay attention from this kind of a neutral blue to a neutral green to a stronger green, but still very new, uh, muted green. Um, a lot of red in it uh, actually and I had to build it up in multiple washes um, and make sure to stop here to have this highlight and then continue there and there is some patchiness but I think the overall impression works really well. Uh, same for these shadows, they were quite tricky. I think they should be a little more blue and light as opposed to a neutral kind of gray, blue and dark. Uh, that's something I thought I accounted for in my mixing but I haven't. But you have to remember when you paint this size uh, a lot of the mixing is, is a part of the hassle. Uh, it's, it's almost like painting for the first time when just the struggle is mixing the right color. Here it's mixing enough and mixing the right color because I like to mix using all my three primary colors and I fall back a bit on uh, just the black to add some darkness. But still, let's say I want to darken some uh, mix that should be orange. So I'll add a bit of blue and black to darken it, but now I'm missing red and yellow. And it's a constant continuation of more and more and adding and adding and adding and it's still not enough and you still run out of paint uh, and I used paint straight out of the tube and mixed it in with my water. It was a challenge. The mechanics are a challenge. Uh, even if you know what you're doing, they're a challenge just because they take more time. Uh, but all in all, overall, I feel like I'm quite happy with this. Um, this wash worried me in the beginning like that it's a little patchy and there's this kind of cauliflower, but now I don't even see it. Uh, I like all of these splashes, I don't mind them at all. I may add a couple of touch-ups, so like when you see this posted, there may be very minor differences. You probably won't catch them because it's such a big painting, uh, but for, it's 99.9% .9 done. Everything else I'm gonna add now is just tiny bits of information. Um, this process had a lot of ups and downs. Uh, just again, heart to heart, generally speaking. I would say the first 70% of the painting I got done with perfectly. And then the last 30%, I just wasn't in the mood. It took me a while to find that day where I felt like I can get a major dent in or a couple of major dents in. One more thing, this is becoming a bit of a long one, but I do want to share everything with you here. The reason I painted this, uh, you know, <laughs> grandiose, large, large scale painting was I did want to create something big and impressive. And uh, I think this is my attempt at it. Um, size of the painting doesn't necessarily have to be a component to make something grandiose and impressive. You can make something small that's very impressive too. But I think this painting represents my constant desire to keep pushing the envelope 
and making things more and more grandiose. Not to challenge myself, I don't care about that. Uh, it's to create something, something spectacular, something that people will look at and they will be at awe with and they will wonder how the hell did someone even manage to create such a thing. Now, the more this process progressed, the more I felt detached from that initial goal, I think it had a bit of ego in it, uh, of feeling like maybe I'm not getting the recognition I deserve for my art. Um, I'm, not, I'm not even talking about stuff like you know Instagram likes, but just the art out there in the world. Um, and that was part of the desire to get more recognition. Now, I don't know if that was kind of a fake motivation or if it's a true motivation and I kind of disconnect, I disconnected from, from it for some reason throughout, especially the latter 30% of the process. It was, it was difficult to reconnect, so I just gave up on it. I was like, it doesn't matter. You know, if I don't feel it, I don't feel it. But I think the initial seed of what made me paint such a grandiose scene was a bit of that and I, I kind of had to let it go, left it by the wayside. And, um, and what was left is just the art. Um, and so does this painting achieve that goal? I don't know, but does it achieve an impressive piece of art? For sure. Um, so it's, I have mixed feelings about this. I'm, I, I think it's a perfect painting for me. Uh, for me, where I'm at right now, like I, no complaints. I, I wouldn't really change anything. That's the thing. I don't know what I would change had I changed anything, like what, more flow, more, more looseness in the beginning? I don't, I don't even think these things would make it better. Um, it's just that I think the thing that spurred it initially was an ever-shifting and ever-changing motivation, which is why I'm like, okay, it's a huge sized painting that I think I did a really good job at. Um, but I don't know, I don't know where it's gonna take me. I don't know where it's gonna end up. I don't know if anyone will buy it. I have no idea. Honestly, I have no idea. Um, so it's interesting, once you, I think once you move beyond a certain point of just learning and getting to a point where you just wanna produce final paintings, um, these paintings can become even more um, emotional, emotionally driven, emotionally impactful. Every painting almost really represents where you're trying to go. Um, and some paintings don't. Some paintings are simpler, more straightforward. Some paintings represent whatever, a yearning for freedom and I just go ahead and go crazy at it. Ruth is being a big baby here. I don't know if it's cut up in the frame. But you have to see this. Okay, you can see a bit of it now, hopefully. Hopefully my head is in the frame. Uh, but in any case, some of it is, yes, be a baby, be a baby. Um, a lot of these paintings are just that. They're a manifestation of what you're thinking about, where you're at. And the, the larger they are, the more of that they become, the more time you spend with them. Uh, so that's kind of my thoughts on this process. I'm going to ramble on now, <laughs> so I'm going to stop. I want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I do um, wonder, and I am curious if you have any questions about just painting this size, and if you have any questions about the process I presented you with, um, if you're wondering about, you know, whatever anything, feel free to ask me. Um, I do want to kind of see what people make of this. I will, by the way, I mentioned in a word, I am going to try and put this somewhere, somewhere big, if I can. The ideal, I'm putting it out there, the exact place where I took the photo that it is based on, this is the Uffizi Gallery uh, that's overlooking Ponte Vecchio. Um, this is the view from the window. You can see even more down below and up above. It's just, I cropped it this way. I would love for this to be there. I know it's very far-fetched. Um, I will make contact with a lot of museums, galleries, etc. cetera, in uh, Florence in the area. I will talk to whoever I can uh, art publications, magazines, because I feel like I do want this painting to be out there. I do want people to see it more. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to say. I did, there's a reason I, I made something like this. And you know, I looked it up and I think the largest watercolor is what, like five by three meters. This is not too far. <laughs> Maybe I'll create something like that. Again, 270, 240 by 70. That's pretty good, you know. Uh, of course, that's the, the size 
like three by five is magnitudes more. It's huge. It's like this multiple times and another one there. It's huge. It's huge. Uh, but yeah, we'll see where it goes. Thank you once again for following. Thank you for sticking along with this process. It's been a long process. Um, and I've shared updates. You will see the story highlight on Instagram. But yeah, this means a lot to me that, you, that you're here and you're kind of in on the process. So thank you for that. Thank you to anyone who supports me over on Patreon. I really do appreciate uh, that support. It gives me a lot more freedom uh, to post a lot of videos uh, and teach and share as much as I can for free out there. Um, if you want to receive credits at the end of the videos, that's one way to get that. Uh, and I do share some um, exclusive posts, a couple of exclusive processes there. Uh, and also sometimes I'll share a snippet like the Cars book. I shared a snippet of it before everyone else saw it. Um, and yeah, if you want to learn how to paint watercolor, check out my courses. I'm going to put a link to everything in the description box below. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.